Alright, today we're going to be continuing from episode 8. If you remember from episode 8, we had our contact form, which will now send an email whenever we send the message to our support at driftingruby.com. The problem is, is if we had our setup configured to send the email through SMTP, we would notice that the client would have a one or two second delay while it was connecting to the SMTP server and sending that message. Wouldn't it be nicer if we could just hit send message and the user will immediately get a response back. Now, to do something like that, we can push the actual sending of the email into a background process using ActiveJob. ActiveJob is a wrapper for your background processor, whether it's Sidekick, Delay Job, or something similar. Today, we're going to look at setting up ActiveJob with Delay Job. All right, the first step is to create your job. In our case, we're going to create the contact mailer. And you'll notice that it creates two files, your test file and also under app jobs, your contact mailer job. So back in our mailers, contact mailer, we're just going to take the parameters that we're passing to our sync contact and we're going to go up into our jobs, contact mailer job, and then we're just going to paste those in. So we're going to perform these actions and then what we'll need to do is we need to take the contact mailer and the sync contact and we're going to pass those through. So here we just call our contact mailer sync contact and then we can take our parameters and pass them in. So back in our controller under the sync contact, instead of directly sending the email here, we want to post this in our background job. So we'll comment this out and then we'll call on the contact mailer job perform later and then pass in our variables. Next, let's set up our delayed job. So going into our gem file, we can add in the gem delayed job. Now, if you are going to be interfacing with the active record, then you do need to add also the delay job active record and then run a migration for creating the necessary database. So what we can do is we can go into our terminal. We can run the rails generate delay job active record and this will create a migration file that we can then run rake db migrate on and you'll see that it'll create a table with a couple of different fields here that will be queued up in the background process delay job it'll just check this table and as it sees it it'll lock the record perform the task and then delete the record if it successfully ran Another gem that we'll have to add is the daemons gem because this gem is going to allow the delay job to be ran as a daemon, so meaning in the background with no user interaction. Within your config application, we will need to specify which background processor we're going to be using. So you'll simply type config, active job, queue adapter, and then delay job. And you can select your other background processor if you are using something different. So this is where all you have to do if you are wanting to swap out your background processor for a different one, all you have to do is come in here and change which background processor you're going to be using. And you're not going to have to interact with all the different other parts of your application that's specific to the background processor, except for maybe a config initializer. Now a good thing to note is when we deploy this to production, we'll want our background processor to start automatically. And you can do this by adding the whenever gem. So adding the gem whenever and you'll want to run your bundle command to install this. And then in our config directory, we can create a schedule.rb, which will be picked up by the whenever gem. And we can just type in something like this where every reboot, we're going to run the bin delay job, select our number of workers. In this case, we can do two if necessary, and then start. So save this under your config directory and call it schedule.rb. If you do have trouble getting your cron tab to pick up your command here, you can also pass in command and then pass in just a single quote with your command there, and that should work as well. 
So back in your terminal, you can type whenever-help to get a list of the different commands. To write your commands to the cron tab, you can use the dash W or you can use the dash C to clear it out. So if we type in whenever-w, we can then see that it is written to our cron tab. And then we can type cron tab-l to see what has been added to our cron tab. So here on the reboot, it's going to run our delay job with two workers. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching.